guys this is glory marie thank you so much for tuning into my channel i hope everyone's doing well i hope everybody had a great relaxing weekend i hope everybody was able to have time with their children and loved ones and if you are working i'm right there with you i had a really um long three 12-hour shift um this weekend which i have every other weekend and that brings me to the topic that I want to speak about today. So today I'm going to try to touch on um, many of the things that happen in mental health um, and how that can affect relationships, um, especially, you know, marriage. And obviously this channel is geared more towards marriage restoration. I'm going to give you a little background on me if not if anybody running into this doesn't know and hasn't listened to my other videos, um, I've been separated for three years and seven months. Um, I played a very active role in the demise of my marriage and um, my husband has chosen to divorce me. Um, we're not officially divorced, but I was a stander for a long time. I still am, but I am standing on God's will whatever his will is for my marriage I'm okay with it and I'm trusting him no matter what it looks like a little more background on me um, I'm a mental health I'm a registered mental health certified nurse I've been working in mental health for let's see the last 15 years um, as a nurse and I also have my psychology degree and developmental psychology so I just want to speak on everything that I can think of um, that can make marriages fall apart when it comes to mental health so I'm just gonna go through a few scenarios if anybody identifies with this just drop a comment below if anybody wants to speak with me regarding any you know issues for any advice or if you need prayer or any type of praying coaching um, I'll link that in the description as well I do that um, as needed for whoever needs it if it's on your heart I'm there the information's there also please like the video share it with other people um, because this is about marriage but it's also about mental health which is a huge issue so i'm going to touch on things based off things that i have been through myself and based off of my knowledge from working in mental health um, for the time that i have so um first of all i just want everybody to know that if you're younger so if you're younger than like 27 and you um use drugs in any way your brain is not fully developed until you're 27 years old. So there is a portion of the brain that um, helps re regulate mood and helps regulate um, basically irritability and decision making and impulsivity and all of that and self-control in some ways. Um, you know, organically, that part of the brain is not fully developed until about 27 years old. So if you introduce drugs... Um, even even prescription drugs of certain kinds um, into your system before you know that age you have to consider that if that happened to your spouse okay so I'm talking on I'm talking on the perspective of the stander the person that's waiting on their marriage to be restored and they want the marriage but the other does not so I'm trying to speak for those that are standing but to look at your spouse and see and try to evaluate their life and see if anything like that happened to them at an early age. Because having mental health, health issues is not an excuse to make poor decisions. That's not what I'm saying at all. It just makes it harder to have, you know, stable moods as an adult when you've had issues when you were younger. You know, so I see a lot of young patients coming into the hospital where I work that, you know, 
they use fentanyl, they use drugs, they use prescription, you know, uh, pain medication, they get hooked and their lives are either destroyed or they can turn it around. I've seen both, but really consider the state of your spouse. Like where are they mentally? Where are they mentally? So depression is a huge topic to speak on. But I've experienced it myself very, very deeply. And I know when you're there, you could have apathy, meaning you have no feeling at all. You're just pretty much numb and you really don't care. You can have passive suicidal thoughts, um, meaning you want to die. You're just not going to actually kill yourself or want to kill yourself. Anxiety, insomnia, irritability, you know, and obviously... If someone has PTSD or has gone through something traumatic, anything can trigger them. So it's really important to realize that all of these things could be happening to your spouse. Your spouse could be suffering with undiagnosed depression, undiagnosed PTSD, or any other spectrum of mood disorder. And, you know... If you can't talk to them, just try to think about it. Just try to think about it because if they're in that state of depression, then all they want to do is feel better. They just don't want to feel the way that they feel. And in their mind somewhere, you know, the enemy comes in, already knows that they're weak. And it doesn't make you weak to be depressed, but that's a point of weakness where the enemy can come in and start implanting ideas into their heads, such as, you know, it's your wife, it's your husband. If you were with someone else, you know, you wouldn't feel this way. Or, or they think that being with someone else will make them feel better. They, they literally believe that, many of them. Um, so they do that. And over time, they'll get disappointed in that. Now, what are you going to do if you know that this is the case, if they're suffering with this? Well, you show unconditional love, definitely. You remain a safe space. So when they come to you, if they're falling apart, you know, don't try to fix them. Just say, I'm here. You know, I'm here and I'm here. I'm here for you. You know, even if what they're doing is hurting you. I mean, Jesus says, you know, we're to love our enemies. And I know your spouse isn't your enemy, but when they're hurting you repeatedly, that's what that means. Someone that's going against you, we are called to love. We are called to love them because the word says anybody loves, you know, who's good to them. Anybody loves those that love them. But how about loving those that are that you know do harm to you so that's a whole other topic but as far as mental health i mean i see a lot of couples with you know their spouse suffering with substance abuse that's a that's so difficult that is so difficult my heart breaks for every single person that's dealing with that right now because they're trapped you know your spouse is trapped and you're job if this is the case is to pray for them pray pray for a hedge of protection over them you know and pray that the demonic stronghold of oppression and of addiction will break off their life i mean you have to cover them with the full armor of god and you have to be patient because substance abuse i mean it's basically like a domino effect like the depression makes you go for the substance and then the substance makes you more depressed you know also other things i have noticed is that um, alcoholism and drug addiction every time i admit patients right and i have to ask them their family medical history patients that are there for alcohol or for drug abuse or mental illness a lot of times, nine times out of 10, it runs in their family. So we can look at that organically and say, yeah, it's just passed down. But think about it deeper. 
that's a generational curse, okay, that not a lot of people talk about. They just think alcoholism is inherited and if your father is an alcoholic, you become an alcoholic. No, you are subject to the surroundings that you were raised in. So that's what I'm trying to say. If they had a traumatic history, a traumatic childhood, it increases the risk of them turning to drugs and alcohol. So you got to look through what going into the courts of heaven really mean and do that for your spouse, for your spouse that's struggling with addiction. And I'm telling you, if, if they're addicted to anything, they're just seeking their flesh, obviously, right? They want to satisfy their flesh and that's it, right? And they don't know how to not have the drug or the alcohol or the combination of both in their system. They don't know how to find, if they're an actual addict, it is very hard for them to just snap out of it. They need support. They need counseling. They need a good intensive outpatient program, a good chemical dependency stabilization program. They need, you know, a multifaceted approach for them to break free of this. Now, do believe in the power of the blood of Jesus because I know people like myself who were addicted to things and they were broken off. They were delivered instantaneously by the blood of Jesus with deliverance. One is a good friend of mine. She was addicted to meth and heroin for 18 years and she was delivered. Someone prayed over her, a very, very good woman of God prayed over her and those spirits, that addiction left from one day to another. She stopped everything. So miracles happen. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they don't. But we just have to be more patient and more understanding and, to, you know, and have the knowledge to know that if you have a spouse that's addicted to anything, they're going to be angry. They're not, you know, they're going to just lash out, you know, bipolar. That's a huge undiagnosed mental health issue. It's so undiagnosed. And a lot of times medications, people think, they're the answer to everything, but it's not. It's not the answer. It helps. It would probably be worse if they weren't on it, but it's not the answer. And I myself know that because I've been on tons of medications in my life. Tons. I have had insomnia since I was 18 years old. I'm finally on less medication, but I was on a ton of medication. And I know firsthand what it's like to be dependent on medication because I was. I could not sleep without my medication. You know, that was my main issue was insomnia, but that's just a symptom of the depression. I think I may have had like a bipolar episode, but I don't believe that I am diagnosed as bipolar. Like I come out of agreement with that. In the name of Jesus, I am not bipolar. I have been through difficult things in my life, but I am not bipolar. But a doctor tried to tell me that I was, put me on medication, and it kind of messed me up. So they have to be getting the right help. They have to be diagnosed properly. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not saying you know, like what I'm saying is just based off of what I've observed as a nurse. So, you know, mental health, you know, there it's so diverse, you know, and it's very interesting because people react differently to different medications based off of what their diagnosis is. So you also have borderline personality disorder. And I'm sure you guys can, you know, on YouTube hear all about it. But the, I'm just trying to say that these disorders, they really affect relationships. And we need to know that even ourselves could have mental health issues that contributed to the demise of the marriage. Like, like mine. Mine was an addiction. But mine was an addiction to dopamine. And dopamine is released in certain circumstances. So 
when you're, you know, you're in love, when you have like the butterflies, when, you know, you get great news, when you're super happy, dopamine is released. And I was addicted to that because I had such low levels that I thought I needed it. You know, I, I believed that I needed it. So the only way that I ever knew for my dopamine to be satisfied was to be with somebody, was to be with a man, was to have a new man or a man, you know, say that, you know, I was attractive or say that they, you know, wanted to be with me or that, you know, they could make me happy or be romantic. Like I fell into those traps because I didn't know how to walk in the fruit of the spirit because I didn't live for the Holy Spirit. I didn't live for God. I lived, you know, for me, I was selfish. So that in itself is an addiction that by the blood of Jesus was broken off of me because I do not have that anymore. And I'm free. I'm free. You know, I'm free in that way. Do I still struggle with things? Yes. And that's another thing. Once somebody has depression, once somebody has been through an episode of depression or anxiety or a manic episode or anything, it's likely to come back, you know, it's likely to come back. So you just have to be prepared. You got to love them unconditionally. You got to know that it's not you. If they're hurting you, it's not because of you. Believe me, it is because of them. I was the one that is where many of your spouses are right now. That's where I was. I was partying, drinking, wanting to go on, you know, to my hometown so that I could dance with my friends and, you know, relive my youth years, quote unquote, and get a break from my husband. And I thought I wasn't in love with my husband and I thought my husband didn't love me. And I thought that, you know, I just thought so many wrong things and I did so many wrong things that in a million years I would not do now. You couldn't pay me a billion dollars to do the things that I used to do. I'm telling you who the sun sets free is free indeed. And when you're truly delivered from something, you can't go back to it. You can't. It's like committing murder. That's it. It's that hard when you're truly changed by the blood of Jesus. But look what had to happen to me to get there. Unfortunately, my marriage had to be taken from me based off of my wrong choice in my broken place, not making excuses at all, but I had to take accountability. I had to work at it. I had to cling to God. I had to trust God. I had to live with the, the consequences. And I had to pray like nobody's business and believe like nobody's business that God will redeem the years that the locusts have eaten and that he makes all things work for the good of those that love him. And when I gave my heart to him and I was changed, I promise you, I promise you guys, that is the thing that I pray happens to your spouses because I was the prodigal. And you can watch my video about that. I was the prodigal. I didn't want my marriage. I didn't. I did not. And that was a lie because I did. But the enemy and my mental health issues and the lies that I've believed and my past and what I've seen made me believe that I was missing out on something or something, which was a complete, complete lie, you know, and I was so wounded that I just lashed out. So just remember that hurting people hurt people, hurting people hurt people, people that are healed and free and love Jesus. Yeah, they're not perfect, but they don't hurt people the way that I hurt people, you know, the way that I did in my life. They're not cursing, you know, they're not like throwing things across the room. They're not perfect, but 
when you have Jesus as the center of your life and everything, you don't walk like you walked before. You don't act like you, you know, act before. You don't think like you thought before. Everything changes. So I pray that that happens to every single spouse here. And for every relationship that's been broken apart because of mental health, man, my heart goes out to you because I see people hurting every single day. And I try to bring people to Jesus as much as possible in what I do. When I'm able to, I pray for my patients. I give them Bibles. You know, I I tell the pastor, the chaplain to come talk to them. I hand them the serenity prayer from Celebrate Recovery. You know, I try and I have helped many people. Many people have been touched by the correct person when they were inpatient in the hospital and they were changed. So just believe in that. Just know that there is like a broad approach to it. That yes, it can happen in an instant. Yes, it's easier than others. Some people, it's easier for them to break free than others. But everybody's an individual with their, with a, their you know, a different organic DNA. And we have to learn how to understand what they're going through. And to take ourselves out of it, step outside, and really assess the situation, you know, and know that it's not your fault. So there's someone here, and I'm telling you right now, there's someone listening that believes that their spouse that is with another woman and is in drugs, you believe that it's your fault. And I'm telling you right now, it is not your fault at all. It's not. You may have had a marriage has two people and both people, because when the two become one, right, you're one. So it takes both of you. If it's one person, it's the other one too. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, you might have had some things you needed to work on, but it is not your fault. That's what I'm saying. And your spouse is lost. They're a prodigal but they're going to come home. They're going to come home to you. They're going to come home to you. See, my spouse is not a prodigal in that way. My spouse is not able to fully forgive me for the harm that I've caused him. But he's not out with another woman or doing drugs. So I'm speaking to a woman right now who believes That her whole marriage fell apart because of her. And I'm telling you right now, your spouse has deep-rooted emotional soul wounds that need to be dealt with. And your responsibility is to pray for your husband. Pray that they are delivered from the domain of darkness. Seek out someone who is very knowledgeable about deliverance. I have a lady at my church. She's amazing. Learn about it. Learn about spiritual warfare. If you don't already, learn about deliverance, you know, and keep praying for him. Forgive him. Don't think about him being with the other woman. Don't think about what he's doing. Don't, don't stock his Facebook page. Don't look at anything. Just pray, forgive, trust God, and think about it. Think about where his mind was at one point in time and what he may have not dealt with yet. And pray that he gets the help he needs. This, is, this can go on. I mean, I could keep talking for like three hours and I'm not going to. So God just put this on my heart. Talk about mental health, how it ruins relationships, and what impact it has on relationships and marriages, how it can break them apart, but how God is the redeemer of all things, all things. So healing someone from depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts and all of every single mental health issue, God can do it. 
God is fully able to do it. We have to trust him at his word. We have to take him at his word. Okay. I was actually going to talk today about covetousness, what God put on my heart while we're standing and we're coveting things, how that hinders our stand. So I'm going to talk about that next time. And I'm probably going to do other videos about mental health in general and, you know, more for the, more from the perspective, not so much about textbook, you know, diagnosis and stuff like that, because you guys can research that on your own and find it, you know, easy. I want to talk about real life experience, mental health from someone who's been there and who sees it on an everyday basis. So I have more to say, but I don't want this to be forever. I pray everybody has a blessed night um, and just, you know, if you're struggling with mental health, take it a day at a time. Keep searching for that help. Keep searching. Know that all it's going to take is that one correct person, that one correct doctor, counselor, mentor, coach, you know, pastor, Bible study, put your all into going into so different things until something sticks to get you out of that place. And remember, you may feel like you're in a pit right now and all you see is darkness, but there is light. The light is coming because darkness is not really darkness. It's just light covered. So the light is coming for you. You're going to see it. There is an end to this pit you cannot stay here forever. You're getting out of it. You're going to get out of it because our, our minds, they need to rebalance. And if you're doing the right things and you're taking care of your body, you're going to get through this. And if you're unable to take care of your body because you're so depressed, be easy on yourself. Be easy. Give yourself permission to feel. You know, let yourself feel. Cry. Crying is good. It helps you feel better. It releases cortisol in your tears. Cry. Let God hold you. Let him comfort you. Happy are those who mourn for they shall be comforted, says the Lord. He holds those tears. It's okay to feel like you're depressed. Just don't label yourself or come into agreement with the fact that you have depression and this is something you're going to have for the rest of your life. I cancel that by the blood of Jesus. So I'm just going to say a quick prayer for anybody who is standing for their spouse that has mental health issues or has mental health issues themselves. So Father God, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you, Lord, that you are with us through all things. I thank you, God, that you protect us, Lord. I thank you, God, that though we live in a dark world, we live in a fallen world, we live in a sinful world where unfortunately the enemy has dominion here in this world, but we are not of this world. Greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. So Father, I pray for every single person here if they're experiencing depression, insomnia, irritability, anxiety, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, suicidal thoughts, hallucinations, psychosis, delusions, no matter what it is, Father God, anything that is off balance in their brain, I pray that you stabilize it, neutralize it, and bring it into equilibrium right now in the name of Jesus. For every single person under the sound of my voice that hears this, I declare that they are free from depression and free from oppression and free from the entity of darkness that has been trying to lie to them. So I ask that you loose that off of their life right now by the blood of Jesus. I declare that they walk in power and love and a sound mind. I declare, Father God, that they walk with love, joy, and peace, Father God, and not fear. Father God, I pray that you give them the patience that they need if they are suffering because of a spouse that's giving them a hard time, that wants a divorce, that's addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, addicted to sex, addicted to pornography, whatever addiction they have. Father God, I pray that you bring them to their knees like you did with me, Lord God. Do not let their marriages fall apart for them to come home, Lord God. Restore their marriages, Lord. 
before that happens. I pray that for every single listener here. And I thank you in advance, Lord, for all that you are doing, for all that you are doing for every single broken individual that is married and their marriage is not what they thought it would be. Father, I pray that you show them why it's that way. Reveal it to them. Help them get to the root of it. Help them get the help that they need, Lord God. Give them the resources and the wisdom and the discernment, Father God, to be able to walk through this difficult season in their life, knowing that you're in control no matter what. You're in control, Lord, no matter what we see around us. And Father, your word says that our life is not measured by what we have. So we might not have a marriage, but we have you. Or we might not have the marriage that we desire in our heart, but we still have you and we always will. So be our husbands in this season. Be our wife in this season if that's needed. Because you're all things, all things, Lord God. You are our mother, our father, our brother, our sister, our friend. We, are, we have a friend in you. We have a provider in you. We have a sustainer in you. We have a comforter in you. We have a redeemer in you. We have a Messiah in you. We have a mighty counselor in you in the name of Jesus. We have love. We have grace. We have faith. We have power. Thank you, Jesus. We have power. We have authority. We have authority to speak things that are not as if they were. So fill these people right now that are experiencing doubt or any oppression fill them with your love fill them with your peace fill them father god from the tip of their heads to the bottom of their toes fill them with the light of your presence let them know that pain may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning which morning we don't know but we know it's coming Because we take you for your word and we know that you never fail. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on any one of us. So we come to you. We come to you saying, have your way, Lord. Heal, redeem, restore, deliver. Because we know that you are the God who heals and the God who saves. So we stand on your word stating that all things are working for our good and we have a hope and a future. And depression and oppression cannot stay. It cannot linger in the name of Jesus. It cannot take away any more of our life. Not a minute, not an hour, not a day, not a month, not a year. No more time. It cannot steal any more time from these marriages and from these individuals right now in the name of Jesus. Because if you're watching this to this point, then you really needed to hear this. So I thank you all for listening and I seal this prayer by the blood of Jesus. You know, guys, in Jesus name, amen. It's just there's so much to say, you know, and everybody has their story. So, you know, everybody has their own story and everybody is different and everybody reacts to things different and everybody has experienced things different, differently. You know, everybody's personality, we're made in God's image, but we're all made unique. So think about that. Think about that and really meditate on that. How are you unique and how is your spouse unique? How are you two different? And how did those differences cause this to happen and, and go after the healing, but heal yourself. Remember, put the oxygen on yourself first before you can help the other person. Remember that too. And I pray you're blessed and we'll talk next week. Bye guys. God bless you all. 